You want to farm bamboo and sugarcane automatically, but you don't want to go to the nether, so you can't get nether quartz. That means you can't make observers or comparators. No problem. I'm going to show you an observer and comparator free starter bamboo and sugarcane farm that is totally automatic. And then I'm going to give you the world download for free. Don't you go anywhere. Hello everyone and welcome to another farm tutorial from me, Abermance. Today I'm going to answer all of you that say that automatic sugarcane and bamboo farms aren't starter farms because you've got to go to the nether to get the quartz to get the observers. I'm going to show you how to make this bamboo and sugarcane farm without the need for any nether quartz whatsoever. It's totally automatic and produces hundreds of crops per hour while you go about your business. You don't need to AFK, the farm will work for you whenever the chunk is loaded. So let's crack on with it. The footprint of this farm is seven by 35, although you can make it smaller and you can make it much, much bigger depending on your needs. You've also got two little jutty out bits at the end, which is where we put some chests. Let's get on with it. Everything you need for this farm is inside this chest. These are the correct numbers. Where there are stacks, there are approximate numbers. That villager egg represents the fact that you need one villager to be able to build this farm. And I will tell you how to get it into the farm during the video. As is so often the case, we are gonna come in with the chests first and you can put these in any direction it really doesn't matter then when we've got this blue wall we're going to place in three hoppers running into the chest that's one two and three on both of these one two and three then we're going to come all the way to the other end and right in the very end of these yellows which is one off the end we're going to put in a redstone block we're going to count in one two three four five six seven on the eighth one we're going to put a redstone block on both of them i'm going to count one two three four five six seven and eight and on the eighth one a redstone block and then one two three four five six seven eight and on the eighth one a redstone block that's going to allow us to put down some powered rails five wide with the center being on that redstone block on each and every one of them and then join those up with normal rails and that saves you gold you could do this entirely with powered rail if you want but why waste the gold you might as well use it for something else like going to the nether make sure you get two onto there and that will make sure you've got a good run you're going to connect these all up with normal rails and it should end up looking something like this with the sections of powered rails connected with normal rail. At the end with the chests, you need to run the powered rails up to the second hopper. Then come to the end with the open hopper and using whichever structural block you would like to use, shift click one onto each and then join them up all the way across. You're gonna do the same at the other end. Then between the two, you are gonna place three blocks all the way across for the entire length of this build. These are not gonna be visible. They are structural though, so you need them to be there. I'd use cobble because it's probably the easiest to get. And now you have a bit of a choice. I like to use trap doors here, but they can become quite expensive. So you can use just a few trap doors, no trap doors whatsoever, or completely row up the front of both sides with trapdoors. I've taken the decision to do just the first three sections with trapdoors, which means I only need a total of 12 trapdoors, and that's far less wood to be using up. Come to either end of your farm and place a dirt block on top of the rails. You need 15, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Do that from this end as well, and also from the other end, so you've got a total of 60 dirt blocks. You should have a gap of three blocks between the ends of your dirt blocks and place those with solid blocks all the way across the middle like that and then place a row of solid blocks at the end to make it too high. So it should now look something like this. I'm also gonna replace this visible wall with stone in all four corners. Then using a stair block of choice, I'm using this spruce. On the dirt section, place an upside down step. You may, if you want to, want to change these out for downward sloping steps as well. It's entirely up to you. I quite like the solid step shape, but if you wanted to make it a little bit more gradual, you could do that, it's entirely up to you. I've decided to mix it up a bit with some steps and some solid blocks. Then come up onto this section and replace these with solid blocks right here. Then wherever you have got these upside down steps, place a glass block and then add another row of blocks at each end. If you are growing bamboo and only bamboo in your farm, you can miss out this step. But if you wanna grow any sugar cane, do this next bit. You want there to be water touching every single one of these dirt blocks. 
It doesn't have to be a water source block. It can be literally the thinnest bit of water, but it has to be touching the block. So to achieve that, count one, two, three, and on the fourth block, place water. One, two, three, and on the fourth block, place water. One, two, three, and on the fourth block, place water. You can see you've got plenty of water across the entire tray. You can do that on the other side as well, unless you're gonna put bamboo in this one. One, two, three, water. One, two, three, water. One, two, three, water. And that covers you up completely. You then need to place a block along the entirety of the middle so there is a gap between the dirt and the block here, all the way across where you've got dirt. When you reach that, stop. Do the same on the other side. Then use whichever block it is you want to be visible behind your bamboo or your sugar cane, all the way along both sides of this cobblestone, do it on both ends. So you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Raise your central block just one level all the way along like that. You're gonna do this on both sides and then grab yourself a piston and on either side of that block, place a piston facing in towards your dirt. Do it on both sides here and again, do it on the other section of your farm too. As I said earlier, you can make this farm smaller if you're short on resources and you can make it much bigger. It just depends how much you've got and how much you need. Place a block right in the center of your farm there and put a redstone torch on that side and a redstone torch on that side. Then grab yourself another block there and there and place a redstone torch on top of that and a redstone torch on top of that. You'll notice that those torches turn off because these torches are powering that block, which is then desensitizing that one and it's creating a knot gate. If we were to remove that, you can see the torch comes on, put it back, the torch comes off. Then place three blocks either side here to create a channel and then come along to the end, fill out that side completely and raise the glass by one more level on both sides of the farm. Then increase the level of this channel by one block so it's only one block deep. Come inside it and come to one end and using crouch, come out one further block and then grab some stairs of the same block and place an upside down step there. And then repeat that on the other side. Come out one block and place an upside down step right there. Then grab yourself some redstone and run a redstone line across all 15 of these blocks that you've got down the middle. Don't put one on there because you don't want it. Do that on the other side as well. So it will now look something like that. Grab a bed and at either end, it really doesn't matter which end, place your bed down like that. And then at the opposite end, place down your whatever workstation it is you're gonna use. I'm using this loom because it is so cheap to craft. Then place glass either side of the workstation and at the end as well and then come either side of the bed again shift click this to make sure that you don't jump into the bed or create that as your spawn point and you surround both of those up make that another level higher and along the here also make these walls one level higher so we're creating a two deep trough all the way along like this you can then grab some more glass and make this glass level another level higher also all the way around the farm and also again the end walls one level higher and then place another structural block on top of all of your pistons we're then going to place one more row of glass at this end but only that end because we need to come and get a villager inside this thing and if we make it too high it just makes it harder for ourselves. this bit isn't too tricky i'm going to show you how to do it now Using some temporary blocks, I'm using cobblestone, make a stair so you can literally walk up these yourself to get into and out of this trench and access this workstation. And once you've done that, we just need to get a villager close by, which is why it's often good to do this near a village. Now, you can use a boat to get these villagers close by if you wanted to, especially if you've not got too much dodgy terrain, but things like path blocks and hills can make it tricky. So what I like to do is grab a workstation and slowly lure them towards yourself. If you place the workstation down, one of them will pick it up, it will like it, and it will take that and it will come along and you take it further away, place another workstation, it will eventually come along, that's locked onto that. You can see it's coming close to us. It will take the worst station's profession. And you just keep repeating that process until you get it closer to you. And as a result, it will get closer to the farm. 
This one's a gradual process, but eventually you'll get there. Eventually, you'll get a villager that's interested in your workstation. Once he's in, make sure he stays there. He's now trapped and can't go anywhere. You can now remove all your staircases. What we can do now is place whatever crop it is you want to put into your farm. I'm gonna make this half sugarcane and half bamboo. And because you've got water down the middle of all of this farm, you can place sugarcane and bamboo wherever you like in any combination because the sugarcane will plant on all of those dirt blocks. I've planted sugarcane along both of one side and bamboo along both of another. Now I've done that, I can place a pressure plate right in the middle of those two redstone torches. And what happened is when that villager walks over the pressure plate, he fires those pistons as a result of turning those redstone torches on, which fires all of that redstone here. That will then catch anything along there and knock it off to be caught by the minecart with hoppers that we are gonna place at the end of both of these systems. Open up the trap door at the end and at that end rail, place down a minecart with hopper. That will run all the way to the very end and come all the way back again and deposit anything that it picks up into this chest right here. You can see it's already started. Do exactly the same on the other side with a minecart with hopper right there and that will do exactly the same. And you'll collect everything in these two chests. I've done it so only bamboo will come into this chest and only sugarcane will come into that one. Then build up these walls across the middle on both sides. That will lock the villager completely in like that and build up the walls along here as well. Now on the bamboo side, you're gonna to wanna to make this a little bit taller because the bamboo will grow a lot higher. However, you only need this to be three high on the sugarcane side. I have made the bamboo five glass sections high and then an additional block. The sugar cane is three sections high and then an additional block. At this point, it is a really good idea just to put a little bit of light inside this channel to make sure nothing can spawn in there if the light level drops to zero and place a few torches inside these redstone channels as well because you don't want there to be any light updates, especially if you're on a server because that can cause lag. I'm gonna take five more glass blocks and place them around the bed. I'm then gonna get a spruce slab, place it there, there, and there. Some steps, place them there, there, and there. And then some more steps placed at the top like that. I'm then gonna bring these steps around so they create a lip like that, there, and also there, and another slab there and there. to so create a bit of a roof over that pod. I'm now gonna create roof across the rest of the build as well. Now I'm going to match it up fairly closely with both the pods having a very similar roof. However, this side is a little bit lower and what that means is that we need to grade the roof in just a little bit. So we're going to move that around like that. That's going to be like that and bring those parts in. I'm then going to put solid rocks there and bring just slabs across the top. That's going to allow me to bring a roof across like this section here and the same on the other side. I can then bring an overhang using slabs because an overhang makes the roof look far more attractive along like that. Do exactly the same on the other side. Bring in this roof up so as it is the same level right there and then repeat as I go along that side. So on this side of the farm, the roof looks a little bit like that. And on the taller side of the farm, it looks a little bit like that and joins together in kind of that slight slope. Then what we can do is we can variegate up this roof so as we've got different types of textures, whether that's using color or just using extra blocks. And then it's always nice just to dangle a few lanterns here and there to give it a little bit of life and light. Just in the time it's taken me to do that, I've managed to get myself very nearly five stacks of bamboo and almost a stack of sugar cane. That was about 20 to 25 minutes. Your farm is now finished, but it'd be quite nice just to pretty it up a little bit, wouldn't it? And what's better to pretty stuff up with than leaves? We have got loads of bushes all around this build, a nice pathway coming up from that village so you can make your base in the village on the world download and then come up and gather everything from your farm. I've made the pathway split both ways so you can come either side of your farm to see in 
to your, both your sugar cane and also your bamboo, easy access to your chest, and then a nice little garden area right next to it with a pond, more lake, a little bit of sugar cane, and some pretty flowers. And I'm gonna give you this farm, plus this gorgeous seed as a world download. So you could start your Minecraft 118 survival world right here, right now, with a working sugar cane and bamboo farm. Let me know if there are any other farms you'd like me to have a play around with in Minecraft 118 Survival. Look forward to seeing your comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you enjoyed them, and I will keep on making them. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.